before I say that real quick. Are we ready, gentlemen? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Let's begin. Chris, fantastic performance tonight. Winning within a minute and a half uh, with a rear naked choke. You know, what was, what was the game plan going out there? Was it always to get out, you know, get in, get out quick? Um, well, well, that's always the game plan, but it never goes that way. Um, a new opponent two, two weeks ago, so we didn't know much about him. He's quite good everywhere, so we just wanted to see it played out. So the hard work was done, the training was done. So luckily enough, this time round, a minute and a half in, I'm sitting vodka ten minutes later. Quite a lot of us didn't see it because we were in here. <laughs> the last opponent we saw. Story of my life, man. We turned round and you're on top of the cage. So <laughs> that's how poor you have uh, it was good, good feeling coming after our loss. Um, obviously, the last time down here, so time to make new memories. Uh, I was in Brazil last week with my teammate Paul. I went in London, and we're in Sunderland tomorrow for the rest of my teammate. That's the sort of type of team we are, not I mean. Let's fucking, let's do this, man. I saw Mario Saeed talking to you afterwards. Aye. What, what was that all about? He came out and gave me a kiss, I think, man. <laughs> fucking <laughs> stirring his drink with my bobby, man. Uh, <laughs> sorry, man. <laughs> Sorry, uh, but no, he's like, let's go. And I mean, the, the guy probably would be a sear rib, and then two, two days later, he's dead left 180 on his Instagram. Couldn't say fucking idiot, you know what I mean? But I'd have done Mario quicker than I'd done that guy, so if he wants this sauce, then I'll be it. Seems to be a wanted man at the moment with Peter Queeny looking for points with you as well. Aye, like, that guy's weird, and he's like an ex psycho girlfriend, man. <laughs> like, come on, Pedro, calm down, man. Settle down a bit. Uh, Mario first, then Paul with Peter. How about Terry Bridge? I know there was a bit of oh, something that guy, man. Intrigue. I don't know why all these guys want to fight me. I'm the coolest guy about. And they, they love for the Scottish, you know what I mean? Um, ah, he came in and just sat, sat across me and said, what are you saying now? So I jumped up like, hey, what are you saying? And then he fucking turned into a barmaid. They went for a bounce into a barmaid in 0.2 seconds. Yeah, speaking about the love there as well, Chris, massive crowd support once again. Now, <laughs> along with you from Coatbridge, Holy Town. What does that mean to have such support down here? I didn't know I sell that many tickets, man, honestly. <laughs> Some cat must, must have sneaked in through the back with the food or something, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, when I came out, it was through, through all angles, salt tyres everywhere. I, it's, it's, we're in London, we're not in Glasgow, we're six hours down the road, but I think they would follow me anywhere. Uh, and I'll quote Tommy Burns here. I don't know if he's maybe not know Tommy Burns, but he's a, a Celtic great. Uh, they're there, and they're always there, and God bless everyone. Chris, I know you were talking about <coughs> phonology, and you were talking about opponents there. Spell that one. Consi <laughs> considering that there is Bellator <laughs> Dublin coming up. <laughs> about order. About um, order. Yeah. You, you talk about a co main event with Peter Quigley? Well, how about that? Ah, it sounds good, but he's been that much of a fucking rat that I don't want to give him his way. He'll be in my terms, you know what I mean? You no, know that fucking idiot. My terms, so he'll wait his turn like the rest. Chris, obviously the European series this year has had a fantastic success, you've been a part of that. Thanks, what would it mean for you to go to Scotland? And oh man, hopefully Rab uh, Whiteford does, does the job in a couple of weeks time. I've done my job several times. Uh, it's Chris Duncan's coming up in Dublin and um, we've got animals. Uh, Ross Houston's a champ, world champ. My teammate Paul Craig in the background just fucking smashed Shogun, you know what I mean, in Brazil. No love for the Scottish, but we'll be off to fucking fight. And we've got a crazy atmosphere, I'm at Celtic Park every week, 60,000. Been to Ibrox, Hamden, gigs in the Hydro, Barrowlands, we create an atmosphere and an energy like nobody else. Dublin's good, Scotland's better, I just need to take a wee bit of, a wee bit of faith on us. You spoke as well, Chris, when I was talking to you about how important it was for you to rectify them mistakes that were made against you for it to be in London. What does it mean now to have to rectify them mistakes and come away with the win there? Aye, well, it was all down to my nutrition this time. Last time I left myself two stone to cut in like six days. <laughs> Don't try it at home, honestly. Um, <laughs> so I go uh, Dean Kirk in, involved with my nutrition, my diet, tweaked a few things with my weight cut, and I was like a fucking new man yesterday. I didn't even feel like I cut weight. Could have fought last night. So I think it shows there, the build up, my energy in the changing room. It's just, it's just as important as the fight itself, your weight cut and uh, your diet. So you man, you me, enjoy this vodka. Chris, so you um, were basically the, the subject of a BBC Scotland documentary. Oh, did you watch that? Yeah, I did manage to catch it. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Is this a word on um, how, how you think well, that's raised your profile and um, how many fans you developed off the back of that? I um, obviously done wonders, I've done good views in BBC. Tell that documentary about mixed martial arts alone is, is a good thing. So, yeah, like I felt the love after that during that still the now. So, long may it continue. I've got endless amount of fans. If they want to fucking join this trade, man, there's plenty more time. And just a word on, uh, I see on your shirt over there, you've got uh, Chris's house, and I know it's a very important cause. Do you want to just uh, put a word in about... Um, it's a good spot for you, I appreciate that, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Chris's house is a charity-funded organisation I'm an ambassador for, mm -hmm. to help raise awareness for suicide in my area, in uh, central Scotland. It's pretty, 
pretty bad at the, bad at the moment. So, um, yeah, uh, Chris's house, they're saving lives every day. 50 volunteers at 24-7. You can phone them up, check in whenever you want if you're having suicidal thoughts or down or depressed. They're the people you go and see. Like, they're actually saving lives. Thank you for that, Lindsay. Appreciate that. Get your drink. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? That is. Thank you very much. Have a good day.